We have time for one final question before we have to wrap up. Yes, in the back here. My name is Lenny Akinali, also from Nigeria. I think uh, we should take into consideration the issue of communication when it comes to community health and in relation to the Millennium Development Goals. The people at the grassroots, they have their own ideas about health. I think what we need to do is when we go there, we need to study the environment, we need to study their language, what they understand, and most of these policies should be translated into the local languages. We need to study the people themselves, the language they will understand, and to work with them. They already have ways of you know, planning their families, but we need to listen to them. We need to know the ways, how they do it, and they, to build on what they know. Uh, Jeff, I think I'll refer this to your colleague. The question uh, was uh, from a, uh, one of our audience members from Nigeria. Uh, was how to uh, engage communities uh, and to translate the issues that are being talked about at a global scale in terms of the MDGs uh, into actionable and appropriate items at the social level in the communities and families uh, of the developing world. Thank you for that. I think that's an essential question. Now that uh, a strong case has been made that reproductive health is important to reaching the MDGs, Today we have the knowledge, we have the technology, we have the best practice to actually make it happen. So how do we operationalize this? How do we make sure that poor rural women from northern Tigray, for instance, have access to the services, the information, and are able to, are empowered enough to make proper decisions for their lives? Right now at the Millennium Project, we're working together with colleagues to find new ways to get services as close as possible to the household, uh, which basically means creating self-efficacy so that women can make proper decisions. That also means providing access to services and inputs and commodities. Um, I think government is committed to getting people involved in the decision-making process and the planning process, uh, getting communities involved in thinking through the solutions for their uh, reproductive health and their future. And usually what tends to happen, and I'm always amazed when I see this when I work with communities, is a lot of solutions will come from the communities themselves. through the problems with them. You're always amazed at how much resources they have and how much they have solutions to the problems that their communities are facing. So yes, it's an important component of what we need to be doing. Uh, we need to get the message out there as close as possible to the individual, which means rural poor women mostly that are affected by reproductive health problems. We need to put together networks that link uh, decision-making authorities to beneficiaries, which some countries have been able to do quite well. Right now we're working on projects to uh, uh, benefit from best practices, from experiences with community health workers, where we can quickly train community health workers and deploy them so that they interact between the household and uh, the um, community-based clinics. This cadre alone offers incredible opportunities to address problems in the women's environment. And it's been successfully done in several countries that we've looked at, from China to Guatemala to right now in Ethiopia with health extension workers. And I think this is the first step that we can implement quite quickly to ensure that health information and services are taken to women in their environment. Jeff, I don't know if you want to add something. Maybe I'll just add uh, one word uh, to that. We're uh, engaged in this Millennium Village project, which uh, some of you uh, may have heard about or been partners with us uh, on. And this is community-led development that cuts across a number of sectors, agriculture, basic infrastructure, child's education, uh, clinical health services, preventive uh, disease control. And so we find that in a very short period of time, because of the community's own leadership, it's quite possible to have a decisive change in the levels of food production being increased, in access to safe drinking water and a safer physical environment, uh, and of course the introduction of clinical health services. Now on top of that comes the role, this unique and special role of community health workers as outreach. So what we're really uh, trying to promote right now is community-led development across many sectors, clinical health services and preventative uh, health 
uh, services, whether it's to control malaria or unsafe drinking water or uh, safe uh, cooking fuels, and outreach to households through uh, community health workers as a major component of the local health system and a part of the health system that can be trained in a short period of time. I think it's a powerful combination. We're always in search of uh, good examples, best practices, experiences from elsewhere, and I would like to encourage anybody to uh, write to Stan or to, to myself, sax at columbia.edu. Uh, Gary is a, a longer name. I'll pass the messages along. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think that uh, if you get back to us with the uh, examples of successful community-based uh, introduction of sexual and reproductive health services or queries uh, or examples that you think are important for us to know, believe me, they will get into the policy discussions, into the thinking. Uh, we'll be most grateful. Uh, and with that, let me uh, thank our speakers. Uh, Ben Bernstein, Anna Langer here, Jeff Sachs, and Gary Camille uh, up in New York. And let me say how proud I am uh, that the Global Health Council is able to be associated with this important report uh, and its recommendations. Thank you all, and thank you. For